um, where was we? Uh, yeah, and then like in with Inci sort of coming back in, it didn't go as as well. Finished mid table, um, and he weren't weren't around for for that long. And then Carl Robinson came in, who, who stayed with the club for quite a few seasons. Um, had some success with you as well. What what was what was Robbo like as, as a gaffer? Because there was always a lot of rumours that he was sort of linked with bigger clubs or as such a lot of the time, and he never yeah. never jumped ship. Yeah, he he was good. He was he was in his assistant. Um, That's right. Yeah. Times, or he was coached the first time, assistant the second time. Um, really good coach. Really bright. Um, really good in the field, sort of kind of. Um, forward thinking sort of coach um, so when Inti left Carl come to me and a few of the senior players and said listen I, I, I want to put my name in for the job this is what I see happening in terms of how we want to play and what I want to do would you support me if I if if, if I put my name in so uh, we said yeah like you know what he was saying was good and, and we said yeah like, so he had the final six games I think five games of the season um, mm. I think we lost four, <laughs> but, um, but he's but, I mean, yeah, <laughs> his ideas were good enough to sort of they gave him a shot. Um, and he was, he was good, Carl. He, he was really good. He was, he's a really good coach. Um, he's one of the managers that says, like, you know, wants you to play, and so the football was always really attractive. But he was one of them that he asked you to do something, and if he asked you to do it and you got it wrong, he would stand by you and say, I've asked you to do it. Um, because there's loads of managers that say, Throw let's, like pass and let's do this, and then you get tackled, and they're just like, Why are you doing? doing that for? Put it in the channel. Or where Carl was, he would take the blame 100% for you. That's and brilliant. It, it built a good trust with the players to play a certain style. Um, yeah, because you're going to respect him in turn for that, you know what I mean? If he's not yeah. just throwing you under yeah. the bus. Yeah, exactly. You come out of the press and just say, Yeah, that was my, um, I asked him to do it. And There'd be no problems in training. He'd be like, "Listen, we do it again. We try and do it better. Or we try and improve." Um, and so he, he was good. Um, and I think he was there six, seven years, and we had a few playoffs, and you know, eventually managed to get up with him. But we always played like a distinctive style, and you know, along the way, we, we sort of had some some quite good moments with, with him in charge. In that in that first season, Dean. Um, you lost to Peterborough in the playoffs, but there's there's some players in that's in the first the first like full uh, year that that Carl had. Did he Haman, yeah. uh, Rowan Vine, um, George Baldock, who's obviously gone on to play Premier League football, uh, Adam Clayton, and then there was Angelo Belanta was another one that uh, he was like a, a little local kid um, that a few of my mates knew as well, and uh, he was touted to for, for big things um but there was a name that i come across and i mean you've you've played with pele yeah i saw that yeah the gro- Wait, was his first name though <laughs> i don't know i just saw pele i was like what was he like i was just gonna ask you what was he like mate <laughs> he had about five names didn't he and he just went with pele yeah yeah, yeah. i think he just sent a half back then when i played him i don't uh yeah you know i, no, I don't even know who that is Pele, was his, no. I think he might have been a half. I don't, mate. I just saw he had he had loads of names, as Terry said. I didn't even look at him, look him up. I just had to say to him, <laughs> he played with Pele, mate. Yeah, it definitely wasn't the right one, though. It was, it was <laughs> like, right. So his name, his name, yeah, he was a defend, no, he was a defensive midfielder or a defender. His name was Pedro Miguel Cardozo Montero. Pele. Pele, yeah. I'd have gone with Pele there and all. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what yeah. him a contract, the fella. <laughs> but what what was that like playing? You know, with 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 the likes of like Diddy yeah. Haman. Yeah, it was it was strange. Um, Do you coach as well? He coached a little bit. Yeah, he come in as a player, um, and we did pre season together. And you no, know, he, he wasn't quite. You know, he, he was of a certain age where he was like in the runs. He was quite far behind and stuff. And you're thinking. Uh, Will he actually play? Um, I think he played like five, six games for us. And he was like, he was unbelievable at reading the game. Like, obviously, it sounds a bit silly, but he, he, he read, he made so many interceptions. Yeah. Um, he just didn't, obviously, at his age, he's, 
like in terms of like running and stuff. He and I think after about five six games, I think he felt like he was he, he didn't really want to do what he was doing to himself. You know, he had a, he had a great career. And I don't think he really wanted to end it like it was going. Um, and so he moved into sort of the coaching side of things. But um, he was a top bloke to be fair. Really good lad. Like he was got stuck in with us. Um, loved the bet. Loved the gamble. He was always like he was. Like glued to the screen for the horses and, and and whatnot, but he was um for someone that had won what he won, he was he was like a good teammate and yeah. sort of made himself one of the boys sort of thing. That's brilliant. Yeah, love Diddy Hammer, and like obviously he's never played for a team I support or whatever, but it's always one of them. I think everyone liked him, didn't they? It was, yeah, yeah. Until, he, until he scored against Seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. What I mean, what what a thing to say that you scored the last goal at the old Wembley. You he know? did, yeah. Yeah, bastard. Yeah, I don't like him actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, and the, the the first couple of seasons under Carl Robinson, you finished both seasons. You finished fifth and lost in the playoff semi final. Um, yeah. So no luck in the playoffs at all. No plans, yeah. And then um, that the next year after that, 2012, 2013 season, you had your first meeting against. AFC Wimbledon in the FA Cup and 1-2-1. What was the build-up to the game like and what, what was the game like as well? It, it was really strange. Um, I think the season before, we were due to play them. We had Stevenage in a, a replay of a cup game and if we won, we'd, we would have got them. And I think, keep it, I think Dave Chuck went in in like the last minute of the game and then they won on penalties. Um, so it had been coming like They've been yeah. moving through the leagues and you felt like it was going to happen. Um, it was strange. It was quite a big build-up for the game. Like We had a press conference um, you know, for about four or five days before the game. We were doing like cameras at the training ground and you know, everyone wanted to do interviews. And, and it was quite a big build-up for an FA Cup first round or second round, whatever it was yeah. at the time. Um, I remember it being a big deal. Like Yeah, it was, it was, it was quite strange. Um, and the game, like we, we normally just drove to the ground, but police said that we couldn't drive to the ground. We had to go and like, get bust in. And it, it was all a bit strange, really. And um, a lot of it as a player, you just sort of, you don't really get involved with it. Like, you know, I think the fans are doing whatever they want to do. It's, it's not really interest me to get involved in that sort of side. So you sort of worry about the football. But the, the game was pretty, pretty crap, to be fair. It, was, it wasn't a great game. It was... Uh, Overhyped for what it was. Yeah, like there was no. Like everyone was so aware. Like I think everyone wanted like a big meaty tackle or something. But I think both teams were a bit wary about either getting someone sent off or. Yeah. And so it become a bit of a bit dull and a bit nothingy really. And then um, it looked like it was going to go to extra time or penalties, or whatever it was at the time. And then uh, we scored in like the last minute, I think it was, um, and the place just erupted, and it was just like just that feeling of like relief and the whole week of build-up to the game and everything that sort of happened and stuff. And so it was a good ending and sort of a uh, nice way to finish the game. But the actual game and the stuff around it was, wasn't was great. Yeah. And that that season, mate, um, you finished eighth in the league, I think it was. And you was expo you probably knew about him anyway, obviously being in the club, but that that was the first season that Delhi was exposed to the world, mate, like in, in football league and that. Um what was what it was as that? lazy as Jose says? Yeah. <laughs> was, that was one that was one part of the question. Was he as bad <laughs> in training? But I mean, what was that like to see him obviously burst on the scene right then, being so hungry? Um and then obviously just take it by storm, really, at that age. Yeah, he'd, he'd been with us, he'd been training with us since he was like 15, Del. So, like, he'd kind of been around it a long time. Um, and the all young players, like, you know, you break in and you have a couple of games where you're brilliant and then it drops off. And um, in that season, at the start of it, you know, when you're a young player, you kind of get, you know, I think you're playing left wing at one point. Like they went to play him, but there wasn't he wasn't quite ready for centre midfield. Mm. And so he got chucked on the wing or he got chucked somewhere else. And I mean there were times when he was truly terrible. They got dragged at half time at Carlisle away. Like just he got dragged and Carl come in and hammered him. And so I'm taking you off. And Dell was just like, well, I'll do it then, take me off. 
And uh, he was like, oh, I will. He'd, he'd take him off. I'm sitting there like, Dale, you're 17. Like, yeah. Just be quiet. And Dale was just there, each other going, take me off then. Like, don't moan at me, just take me off. And he dragged him and he went in the squad for like three games and then <laughs> come back. And in the back end of that season, we had a boy called Stephen Gleeson. Uh, he used to play for Wolves, uh, Irish International, beat him, played for Birmingham for a little bit. And then a few other teams. He was, he was a really good player. Gleeson got injured about February time. And he just said to Dell, I'm going to play your centre field and you're going to play until the end of the season. And I don't care what you do, what happens, how many mistakes you play, you're going to play every week. And this is, you know, your chance sort of thing. And Brilliant. he came in the team and he scored, uh, I think he scored a hat-trick from the field after about four or five games. And he, every single game, he just got better and better. And you kind of felt like he, he'd kind of grasped it now. Like he, he sort of had his bits in the team. He'd been bad and been back and had to wait again. And then now he was sort of emerging. And then the start of next season, the year we went up, the two, 2014 season, he was just like a different kind of animal. He'd come back in pre-season, unbelie- like, unbelievable. His running is incredible. And you just knew that you had a different kind of player on your hands. And Started and, filling out and all. Yes, he's... He's, he's bigger than you know. He's, he's like six three, though. Yeah, he's, he's a big boy, isn't he? He's big. He's quite skinny. You don't realize how tall he is, but he's he's a big kid, and you don't realize how he, he can run at like four fifths pace forever. It's the most disheartening thing in the world. Like he just <laughs> his, his top speed is not incredible. He'll smile running past but, you. Smile. Yeah, the run below it. Like if you did a five minute run, he could set off at a really good just below a sprint and he could just run at it forever and he just he used to just run past people in training like doing laps around them and it was just like the season before he was he probably could do it but he felt like he didn't want to do it because he was probably a bit too young to be lapping people uh the season after he was he was like he was gone for it and he he was just physically he was just on a different level to everyone um and it was it was only really a matter of time really before someone Someone sort of uh, took him. Yeah, um, you got got to say that's a bit of a stroke of genius from Robbo as well, giving him that freedom to say you're playing till the end of the season because the confidence that must give him to try things. Yeah, as well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, I mean, there was one of them like he didn't. I mean, that's half his half his genius and half his problem is that when I say he doesn't care, I don't mean it like that. But he will try things, and if he gets it wrong. He doesn't. He doesn't sort of. Oh, he went down to his shell. He was like, "Give me, give me the ball. I'll do it again." Yeah. Um, which I think at the moment is kind of certain managers don't like that, and they want you to play a certain way. Where he he would just keep doing that sort of thing. But Carl done really well in the fact that. I mean, Carl said to me when he was sixteen, "This kid's gonna play for England," um, and he Carl really believed in him, and I think Dell sort of needed that that sort of arm around the shoulder and a bit of love. Um, He's not one of them people that he doesn't react well to a bollocking or like go and prove me wrong. That's not his character. He needs the other way. He needs that sort of I believe in you and you know I back you if if things go wrong. And uh, you know, he, he, he's he's done very well up until then. You know, obviously he had a bit of a dip this year, but he's he's um, you know, he's done amazing. Well, yeah, having a manager who's going to fucking yeah. cunt you off in the press every two seconds probably don't help. Yeah. Here's Jose. <laughs> There's a couple of other players as well, mate, um, from that season that obviously Terry would know very well. Smudge. Um, Not him, Patrick and, Bamford. And, yeah, no, no. I was going to get the paddy. I was going to get the paddy. But I mean, the original, the original uh, Smudge. And and Paddy, yeah. What were, what were they like? Great, to be fair. They're both um, Smithy. I love Smithy. Uh, got in really well with him. Um, totally different to what I thought he'd be. Um, he's quite like a um, quiet fella, isn't he? Really quiet. Yeah, he's, he's quiet. He's a bit like a bit of a skater boy, really. Like he's big. Very he's uh, BMX, isn't he? Because he, he could have gone pro in that. Yeah, yeah cross trainers, all that kind of stuff. Cross trainers, X cross uh, bikes, and motocross, and all that. that. Yeah. Um, doesn't drink. Um, I couldn't believe it when he first came. I said, "Like we can go for a beer." And he said, "I'm, I'm teetotal." And I was just like, "Oh, like bad experience." And he said, "No, I like, never, never touched the stuff." And I've, I'm thinking, 
like you see his persona on the pitch, you think he's gonna be like this Nothing. drinker. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but you're from Leeds, mate. You've never had a drink. Yeah, t- I know. <laughs> that's like uh, that's like Milner though, as Milner, well. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But he was um he was a really good lad. Um just loved football. Um, just loved being part of a group and um, you know, he played at a really good level and you know, he, he had a really bad ankle injury. I think his his ankle mobility was about forty percent less in his left ankle, I think it was. Fucking hell. Which, yeah. which hampered him a lot. Um, but he just wanted to be around it and um really good lad, to be fair, he was really good and, and Pat was Pat was the same. Pat was he scored a lot of goals that year, didn't he? Pat scored a lot of goals. He was, he was a really smart footballer. Even when he first came in, he could tell like, a really clever player. Um, he was just a little bit different. You know, he he wasn't your typical footballer. Like he, the way he carried himself and the way he was was just was quite funny that he just, you know, football's quite rough and ready and he's quite well to do, isn't he? He's very well to do and very yeah, not hidden the clouds, but he's just uh, <laughs> he's just got a certain way about him. Just he's just quite funny, but he's he was a tough because when you come in, he, he was very good, but he, he would rub you up and look a few of the lads a bit the wrong way. Um, and a few of the boys tried to you know, give him a boot and and he stood up for himself, um, which was quite impressive. He was only like 19 at the time. You know, a few of the lads like in training tried to attack him and stuff, and he, he would just bounce off you and just look at you and, and carry on, sort of thing. Not that I, no, it wasn't me, I liked him, but uh, a few of the boys that did it. Uh, he, he stood up for himself and it was. You kind of felt like, yeah, I don't mind that. Like, sort of got a bit of doubt, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because the way because he was so well to do, and you know, he spoke nice, and he, you know, it, it, just the way he was. I think people thought he was a bit of a pushover, and yeah. a bit, but he wasn't. He had he had character, and um, I'm, I'm really pleased to see to see him doing what he's doing. To be fair, because you know, he, he done really well for us, and he's he's a nice kid. Yeah, like he's he's shown a bit of that sort of throughout, even at his time at Leeds when he first came in when we brought him in from, from Borough, he'd had a bit of success at Borough and he had dips in form at Leeds where he, he would go quite a few games without scoring and he was missing a lot of chances and that. And there were sections of the fans that were getting on his back. Like, albeit majority of them were online, a lot of the people in the ground weren't getting on his back because you could see the work that he's doing. Yeah. But again, he showed character. He just didn't give a fuck. He was like, oh, I'll show you lot. Yeah, you know I mean, and and look at him now. The guy, like, he's on the verge of England. Um, yeah, and I, I don't think he's far off getting a call up. To be fair, no, I, I think the weird kind of way, like the Premier League actually suits him rather than he's better the in the Prem because yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's more you got to use your brain and it's it's little movements rather than the championships a bit more hurly burly and that kind of so it, that yeah. actually suits suits Pat a bit more. Um, He's a very intelligent back. player. Like he's really good, yeah. And my, my best mate's a Leeds fan, and so you know we should speak about it. You know, he used to criticise him quite a bit as well. He'd, you know, he'd be like, "Oh, he's missed this chance, and he'd done this." And if we had if he had someone different plan up front, we would have scored whatever. And so to to sort of done what he's done and prove everyone not wrong, but to sort of maybe turn a few heads and like I said, it does show Pat really like he's got that steely character and. Um, yeah. Resilience, yeah. which is which is nice. Oh, I love the guy; absolutely adore him. I think he's amazing. <laughs> I'm buzzing how he's doing, mate. I fucking yeah, top drawer, old Paddy. <laughs> you ain't got his number, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Just get on the way. <laughs> um, and then at the end of that next season, it seems fucking years ago, mate. You you had a testimonial. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seven years ago. <laughs> yeah, do you know? um, was it against Forest? Forest, yeah. What, was it sort of because obviously a lot of testimonials tend to be pretty much at the end of someone's career, really? A testimonial yeah. was that? A, was it a different sort of ball game? Was it more of a, a proper football match against Forest? Yeah, it was. I, mean, I, I, I didn't really want it. It was. I'm not like I don't want any attention on me, sort of. That's how I am, sort of thing. And it was really unsettling. They said to me, "You can, you can have a testimonial." Um, and everyone says to me, "Like you take it because if you contract in a year's time and they don't want you, you can't then go back and do it." So there's like, yeah. you got to sort of take it while you're while you're in contract. Otherwise, it could be too late. Um, and just the way that Milton Keynes in, like, if you was at Leeds and you did a Leeds eleven versus an ex Leeds eleven, you would get a full house, and everyone would enjoy that. But Milton Keynes is there's not enough players. 
and there's not enough. <laughs> you were their longest serving. If it, yeah, don't have well, both teams. In, uh, in what you're trying to do to achieve that. Um, so I didn't want to do it. And, I, and then I spoke to Carl and I said, listen, let's just, let's just do it against the team. And we just use it as a pre-season game and just call it a testimonial. Um, it was supposed to be against Leeds originally. Uh, Brian McDermott. Oh, yeah. Uh, season four had said yes. And then he got the sack in the summer. Oh. Um, and I can't remember who took over and it was just like, it just got a bit complicated. And we said, they said no. And then funny enough, um, we contacted Forrest and Stuart Pearce was in charge at Forrest. And to be fair, they were, they were great. They, um, I didn't realise that when you do a testimonial, you have to, I can't make any decisions. It has to be done by a committee for you. Um, so yes, get this committee. Um, it's, it's really technical and it's really hard to do. Um, basically, you cover everyone's costs, no matter what, of the game. So Forrest's bus down, you have to pay for their food, travel, whatever it is, you, you have to cover the entirety of the costs. Right. Um, and Forrest, they were brilliant. Um, but the Stuart Pierce and he said, listen, like, we'll, we'll do our own stuff. Um, now, don't spend anything on us. Like, we'll make our way down and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they, they, they were great. They'd done everything and more than, than what they needed to do, really. And they, they sort of made it a, a lot easier for me. And, um, yeah, they, they, were, they were first class with, with, with doing that. And um, compared to Carl, who had £600 worth of sandwiches in his office. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I suppose, though, with, with, um, with obviously our first question, like your hero, like Stuart Pearce, I suppose that was a nice touch as well. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was it was weird how it works out sometimes. It's, um, mm. you know, he, he got there and we had a little chat in the pitch before the game and stuff and um, a little bit surreal sort of talking to someone he looked up to and, mm. you know, and he'd been quite complimentary about you. It's quite, it's quite a nice sort of thing. But um, yeah, it was, he was great and uh, Forrest were, were brilliant and it was, it was just, uh, it was an awkward day. It was something I didn't really want to do in terms of, you know, you have to walk out a tunnel by yourself. It's just like, yeah. All those kind of stuff where you don't really want to put yourself in there, but it worked out okay. It was a it, it was it was a pretty good day. Yeah, that's quality, mate. And then the next year, you end up you you finally got to the championship, mate. Finished second, got your promotion. Um, in that same year, you you lost to to AFC Wimbledon actually in the in the football league trophy, but you beat Man United in the in the league cup, bashed them four nil. Oh, Will yeah. Griggs on fire. Your defence is terrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what was that experience like? It's got to be sort of like the biggest scout for, for MK Dons um, at the time. Do you know what I mean? So what, what was that yeah, feeling, it, feeling like winning that? Yeah, it was, it was incredible. It was, it was probably one of the most surreal nights that I've ever been involved in, really. It was um, obviously you draw a main item. And you're, the whole place is, is going mad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sold out in a couple of hours like everyone's trying to get there and you have this massive build up and then before the game you're thinking I, I don't want to be embarrassed like you get that kind of the fear kicks in of like oh, we could lose this 10 nil lads like yeah quite <laughs> easily and, you know you start thinking oh god are we gonna embarrass ourselves on tv and, and whatnot <laughs> um and they had a a mixed team they they, had, they dropped they didn't have their big big hitters but they had you know, the hair and Keane, who plays at Everton now. Chicharito um, was playing, wasn't he? Was really the World Cup front. Uh, Yaz and I, uh, the little boy Kagawa in midfield that was still yeah. there. Um, so they had they, enough players that you thought, yeah, oh, this, yeah. Is gonna a, this is going to be a tough one. Um, but it, it, just, it just went perfectly. Like they, I think mean, Van Howe had taken over and he slowed down their pace in play massively. And the one thing when you step up the levels is that you struggle with is, is the pace of play, like how quickly they can play at. And they were playing really slowly and it just allowed us to, to sort of contain them. And we took, took our chances on the night. We, we sort of, we done well that we, we sort of scored. And then towards the end, they sort of, uh, they, they went just all over the shot. They think they were just sort of, they knew what was happening. And they were, I think the harder they tried, the worse they'd become sort of thing. But I remember looking at the scoreboard and like 89 thinking, could we still lose this at four and oh, like, they start thinking oh, if they score one, could they get two? And then like we'd be hanging on. And then uh the last two or three minutes you actually think, no, no, we're actually gonna beat them now. It was um 
it was incredible to be fair you this you know, to win against men like this would be is would be enough but to beat them 4-0 oh, no. was it was yeah. just yeah, it was just that's real. not beating that that's an absolute trouncing, mate. Yeah, honest, hands it? down, mate. But it, yeah, it was I think it was strange because like it's sold out. So obviously we don't have 30,000 fans. Um <laughs> when, we, when we scored the first goal, I would say maybe 40% of the crowd cheered the first goal. Um because obviously there were so many main night fans in the crowd. Uh second about 60, and then by the end, the ones that had come to watch as a May United fan, but were from Milton Keynes, or they kind of half thought, let's just go with MK. Over. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so when we scored the fourth goal, apart from the four or five genuine May United fans in the way, and the whole ground erupted. And it was a really weird game in terms of we sort of gained fans during the game. Like we ended up with but the United sort of shirt off. They got the <laughs> Classic Man United fans, glory hunting. <laughs> well, they're winning, I support really them. It was really strange. It was great. Um, and I got to meet gigs in the tunnel before the game, like doing like the refs down to the rest room, like having a little chat with gigs on the way down. Just the whole persona of Man United, and you know, you know every one of their players so well because you watched them for years and stuff. So it was it was it was incredible to to play against them and, and to do well. Do you, like what you said there about Van Hal, like slowing down the play, and what with him being such a like the calibre of manager that he was and everything, surely he would have known that that would have suited you like as a team and and he he, he should have set up surely different, like I know hindsight's a, a magical thing, but he should have known, shouldn't he, really, that that would suit you lot down to the ground and that if, if they had just, as you say, played at a bit more pace, then they might have played you off the park. Yeah, no, that, I mean, the first 10 minutes, they, they did like the first five minutes they come out the, the gates and I mean they had a, they had a half decent chance and we were looking around at the corner thinking like Jesus like this is gonna be this is gonna be tough and then I don't know if like they just lulled themselves into playing a certain way um but I, I gather his background you know on the continent and Holland yeah. that is kind of their you know whenever you watch their football that is how they play this it is very technical and I'm not even sure whether he he thought a third third tier team was that good? Yeah, he probably like, assumed you'd be terrible. And well, yeah, I think like you know, in Holland, maybe the, I don't know what their third tier is like, but I wouldn't Ab- assume it's as strong as as ours sort of thing. So uh, I don't know if he was caught off guard a little bit. Um, that or you know, for us, it's the biggest game of our lives. For the main United players, they probably don't really want to be there. Like you know, there was lots of different factors that help you if you can if you can sort of survive that first 15, 20 minutes sort of onslaught, and um, in the end, it. It's all worked out, worked out really well. Yeah, believably well. Yeah, fucking just a bit. <laughs> and then, like we said, you you got up into the championship. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, it didn't go well. You ended up coming straight back down. Was the was it just a step too far for the team? Maybe too soon, or did you not have the squad for it? Maybe. Or? Yeah, that, we we lost. Out of our team that went up, we lost uh, lost Delhi, we lost uh, Benneke Fobe, and we lost Will Grigg. Um, I think that was something like sixty five goals out of out of the team went. Yeah, and so we had our championship team was 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 weaker than our League One team. Um, Mad, isn't it? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if we'd have we'd have kept that team, we'd have finished mid table. Um, because like we, we played like when we played you at our place, we played reasonably well and we sort of and then at your place we scored a known goal of I don't know if you remember it, about a minute to go. Casey scored a known goal, he was winning one nil. Oh yes, I do remember that, yeah. And he tried to read it to his right and he had it to his left and That's it, yeah. it, was, uh, <laughs> it was like no, we, we had he had moments of like we, we wasn't sort of battered every week, you know, we played well, but we just missed one or two players, which was the ones that the unfortunately goal. Yeah, that left us. Um, and I suppose in a way, I don't think the jump in golf is massive, but the step up from the championship is, is a reasonable step. But in terms of finance, is a huge step. Massive, yeah. Um, and so I think the chairman was a little bit surprised that the next level of player, even though he wasn't much better than what you had, would cost maybe five times as much as a League One player. Um, 
I don't think they wanted they were they didn't pay it. And ultimately you need that step up. Even though it's only a small one, it's you, you, you do need to, that calibre of player, you need to step up yeah. and play, you can't you can't get away with it. Um but we you know we was we wasn't in the relegation zone until until March. We done pretty well and we we were doing okay and in the end we just got injuries and we sort of just in the end we just sort of floundered a little bit but um I'd like to think that if they have put a little bit more money into it that we that we'd have had a, a reasonable chance of, of, yeah. of saying that. You you had um you had a few players in that squad like who'd been around, like Matty Upson. Um, Johnny Williams was one I wanted to ask you about because obviously he suffered a lot of injuries, but he still, you know, he still gets the international caps and stuff like that for Wales and that now. And obviously I think he, he might have sorted his injuries out a little bit now, but like he, he was, he's a good player, but he's just obviously he suffered, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's when he plays, he's a bit like, he's kind of like a, a wheelchair player where he runs and passes it late. Yeah. And, He's, he gets tackled a lot and fouled a lot. Um, he, he sort of encourages that he plays right, he sort of sucks you in and plays. And then, so I think a lot of his injuries were free kicks and just sort of taking his toll on him. Um, yeah. But he, he was a good player, to be fair. He, he was a really good player. And um, we had Josh Murphy. Uh, yeah, Murphy he scored a lot of goals, goals, didn't he? Yeah, he done really well for us. Um, played really well. And unfortunately, like uh, with Matt, he got injured really early in the season and. I think we only got like five games out of him, but we could have really done with that. Yeah, that just a player that had played at that level, sort of just to help us. But he just had, he just had injuries, and we just, we just couldn't get him fit or or around it enough to really sort of have any any sort of impact on us. Yeah, it's a shame. Um, and then back down into into League One, Carl Robinson ends up leaving. Um, Robbie Nielsen came in. And then you ended up getting an, another relegation the year after that, back down in, into League Two. Um, and I'm not too sure how to pronounce his name. Is it Dan Machichi? Dan Machichi, yeah. Machichi. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he came in he came in as manager. And there was a time during that season that you was uh, a player coach um, alongside him. What, yeah, it was that. How, how did that come about? Did, did the club approach you for that or...? Well, I, I'd fallen out with Robbie. Um, right. so I had, from October till till January, so we got sacked. I was training with Charlton, with uh, with Carl at Charlton. Um, so I fallen out with Robbie, um, and he he basically said, "I don't, I don't want you at the training ground. Um, if you want to train, then you got to train at about half five, and I'll bring the kids in to train with you at half five. But you're not mixing with <laughs> first thing." So I, was, you know, I didn't want to bring the kids in at half five just to train with me. So I said that I'd, I'd find something different, end up training with uh, with Charlton, with Carl. And during that time, they were sort of floundering and like losing games. And uh, and Dan was going through a lot of the games. Watching, he used to be in the academy, brought through Delhi and quite a lot of the, of the boys had done well. Um, and he was saying that he was, he was speaking to Pete and that, Pete wanted to go back to more the MK way. Robbie was a little bit more direct and sort of a bit more long ball than, than what we'd ever been. And so he said, like, if it, if it goes badly, I think I might be getting a job. Like, would you come back and play? And I was like, look, of course, I'm contracted. Of course, I'd come back. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> the geese just banned me. Like, you know, if I'm allowed back, I'll come back. Um, so I go back. When he eventually left, I give it to Dan and they said you can come back and train. And I'm sitting in an office and they said with with Dan and Keith, Keith Millen, who was the assistant, and they said, uh, you have to go and do a picture out on a pitch. And so I was like, all right. And so they got up and they said, Oh, you're coming as well. And I was like, all right. And then we stood out there and then they gave us a scarf. And the three of us are holding the scarf. And I was just like thinking, why am I, why am I here? Like, I couldn't understand why I was stood holding the scarf. No signing. <laughs> and they said, they said, oh, player, player coach or player, whatever I was. I, I, I didn't know nothing about it. I, I, I'd never once mentioned coaching. I'd never once mentioned anything of the sort. And so I was, when someone said to me, oh, we're going to announce that you're a player coach. I was, I was just like, why? Like, I've never, I don't want to, we, we, we got back in the room. 
and it was me, Dan, and Keith. And Keith said, do you, do you want a coach? And I said, no. And he said, right then, go, go and have a change room. I said, all right. And I walked out and I never took one session or <laughs> uh, was involved in any decisions or I don't know why or how I ended up getting that title, but um, how weird. it wasn't discussed with me and it wasn't, it wasn't something I agreed to. So it was a, uh, I think maybe it crossed wires or or something. I, I don't really know why that that happened, but yeah, it was, it was a strange, it was a strange situation. That is bloody all like really strange, isn't it? He, he must have thought that phone call with you was. <laughs> yeah, do you fancy coach? <laughs> yeah, do you fancy it? Like you think, yeah, obviously, you got playing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was a strange. Uh, yeah, it was strange. Like, a million was kind of the same. Like you know, he was like, "You got to choose," and I was like, "Well, I definitely want to be a player," and he was like, "Well." So you, you should be in it then. So I was like, I'm, I'm happy not to be, but it was just a bit strange that I got, I got in there for the photo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, really odd one. Um, and then uh, Paul Tisdale came in, following that, and you went back up into League One, um, finished third, um, and and got automatic promotion. And then going into sort of last season, what was what was the whole fit like feeling around around the place when COVID nineteen happened? Um, because obviously it's something that you, you couldn't have planned for. Sort of the the season got scuppered, and you ended up <laughs> surviving based on the whole points points per uh, points per game system. Was there a lot of worry around it at the time as to what's going to happen with the, with the future of the, uh, of the club, the future of the the season, are you going to have to play it out? Like, will they come up with a system that will maybe relegate you? Like, yeah. Well, initially, we 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 just thought we'd be off for two weeks. Um, so that's what they said. Like, you know, you're off for two weeks now. Um, we were given like a training program, so we was we were training at home, but we were training hard. Like, we was doing lots of runs. We had to send the runs in, and there was the feeling was that we'd be back sooner rather than later. Mm. Um, and then as it progressed, you kind of, you know, the news was getting more and more severe and you're thinking, like, we're not going back. And then um, the complications around that, obviously, are we going to play? We're we not going to play. And um, I, me and work with Alex Gilby, he was vice captain at the time. We was involved in a lot of the discussions with the chairman and, and Russ at the time to sort of what's going to happen in the future. And sort of in like April, May, it was... It was pretty like pretty severe, like you know, they were talking about maybe 15, 20 clubs going under. Yeah. Um <laughs> it, was, it was really quite worrying. And it was just like, you know, we don't think we're gonna have to pay you. Um, you have to take uh not not like at first it was wage deferrals, but then it was gonna be you have to take wage cuts, um, and all this kind of stuff, and it, it's become really become really serious really quickly in terms of your career, your finances, your, you know, everything really, like what's going to happen. So it, it, was, it was really strange. And we, we knew that we'd be fine because straight away when they did this, that point in the game and we was always not in the relegation zone. So we always felt confident that we right. wouldn't be in trouble that way. But, um, you know, speaking to other players that played for different clubs, you were sort of getting a feeling that a lot of clubs were struggling and they were trying to do a few dodgy things in terms of paying people and stuff. And it was just a little bit unnerving really in terms of you know, what's going to happen. And Cold, yeah. But especially for the boys, you know, some some lads are obviously lucky to have two year contract, three year contract, but some lads were up in June. Oh. So it was kind of well, you know, where does that leave me? Do I get do I get paid or not get paid? Like if we don't start the season until December, what do, what do I do for six months? In yeah. between, would the, would the club step in and give you a contract? Or and so it, you know, a lot of worry and a lot of just uncertainty, which I'm I'm sure is pretty much for everyone in the country, really. In in whatever job, there was that kind of just mm. not really knowing where where you are. Yeah, it's a strange situation, mate. Obviously, touch wood, we're sort of coming at the other end of it now. Um, but you you've had to play this whole season as well. Um, but like behind closed doors as such with, with no fans. Um, again, how, how sort of weird is that, adjusting to, to having no one? It's, it's, it's rubbish, to be fair. You can't say it any other way. It's, it's, um, 
when we first went back, you were so pleased to be back playing football that you were just like, it's, it's great. Like we're, we're playing and, you know, it doesn't matter what, like it's just this, this play football. And then it soon become very, very weird. Like it's, the game yeah. is strange. Um, atmospheres are just, just, it's just so depressing in a way. Um, that whole echo in as well, isn't it? Echoey, you set up at a game, like, you get the, it feels like a pre-season game every game. You just turn up, there's no one there. Uh, we have changed in some of the weirdest places you've ever seen. <laughs> like, we've, every bit of the stadium that you didn't know existed, we're like, we played Ipswich the other day, they put us on the fourth floor executive lounge um, with stairs, no lifts, so we had to walk every time we went down to the pitch, we <laughs> in our boots, 50 yards behind the ground on a concrete floor. In your studs, up four flights of stairs, and it, you know, like it's, it's just then yes, they have port loose showers and that's you know, tactics that though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, it's just the whole experience of of the game. Yeah, it's not what stairs. you're used it's to. It's just not the same. It's, I mean, I, I think as fans as well, like it, it must be the same watching on the TV screen. It must be a little yeah. bit disheartening. It's just, um, it's just not ideal. I know it's the best that we can do, but. It kind of feels like a, a lost season in a way that definitely, you know, I feel I feel sorry for the teams that are going to get promoted, and yeah. they they're going to lose out on you know that euphoria of a last day celebration and and all the stuff that goes with it, and you know, like for yourself, like back into the Premier League, you know, those games like my mate, big Leeds fan, like mm-hmm. desperate for the Man United game, desperate for you know all these kind of games and. You just—it's just so sad that people it's a killer, isn't it? Yeah, it is really. It's—it's it's, um, it's not ideal, but no. Nah. It's, it's, I suppose it's the best you can do. I suppose, but it's just, yeah, it's just not ideal. Well, I was—I was talking to a mate of mine today. He's a Leeds fan as well. And we were just talking about sort of getting back in and can't wait to go again. And we was exactly what you was just saying there. Feeling sorry for the people that sort of get promoted and things like that. We, we was looking at it on sort of the player's point of view because we've got a guy, Pablo Hernandez, who's been there. He's, he's, a, he's a legend at Leeds and he's coming to the end and chances are he'll be moving on back to Spain at the end of the year. And we were saying he spent four or five years sort of trying to get us back to where we, where we want to be. He got there. He scored the goal that sent us up. It's such a massive thing back in the Premier League and he's had no... Yeah, celebration, like, and then at the end of the year, like, I, I was saying, they've got to do something where they sort of try and get everyone in and do like a one off, like, game or something with the, the team that went up and won the league to sort of because this players there, like Ben White, for example, he's gone back to Brighton, he's, he's won the league with Leeds and never got a celebration out of it, like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a it's killer, isn't it? um, like David Silver at Man City, yeah, you know, he's, he's just. He's just left and it's just like, like you say, maybe they may first game of the season next year, they might get people back and have a little parade before the game. Like you, just, you just feel that people do deserve something, you know. It's, it's got to be something, isn't there? It's like us as well. It's like, you know, yeah. Klopp, Klopp said there will be a party, but fuck me, when's it going to be? <laughs> and that's the thing, with the players that have like sort of gone, and like Barry Douglas was at Leeds, he's playing for Blackburn now. Are oh, Blackburn going to allow him to sort of come and be a yeah. part of that? Or, are Brighton going to let Ben White come and be a part? Do you know, it's sort of, yeah. but it, they need to be there because they're part of it. You know, it's, it's a really, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just really sad that, you know, some players might only get one promotion in their career. And that's it. Yeah. You know, you want the fans yeah. on the pitch and you want the party <laughs> after and you want everything that goes with it. And it's just, it's just, um, it's just so sad that from both sides, from the players and fans point of view, that you yeah. just don't get to, to, to have that. What, What's it like, um, obviously, being able to hear... like on, on a normal game, before COVID, could you hear everything that the opposition was saying and managers were shouting out instructions and that? Could you hear that perfectly? Or was the crowd, uh, like, overpowering? And what and what about the goals now as well? Like, the city, yes, you're scoring a goal and whatnot, you know, you probably just give each other a little high five and then it's back because the crowd's not there to, you know, give it one to the crowd and all that. Like, yeah, what's that like at the minute? It's, I mean, when you're playing, you do block out a lot of the noise anyway. Mm-hmm. So, like, a lot of the noise is it's almost background noise. So, you are, you are aware of the pitch noise 
Yeah. Um, but you, yeah, I think when you score a goal, right, it's maybe like twenty five percent less because you have that initial euphoria, which is I think it's still the same. Yeah. But then it's it goes a lot quicker. Too quick. Like, yeah. And, you're like, you know, and then you run over there, and it's there's no one there, so it's kind of like it, it, it <laughs> dies off a lot quicker. You know, it, it definitely does. <laughs> Uh, but you, when you're playing, you can normally hear most of the stuff that the players say. Managers, you, you hardly ever hear them um, in a game because just the, they get they're in like almost they're so close to the stands. They're part of that background noise, so you, you don't sort of pick it up as much. Um, yeah, you, in now there's a lot of screaming that goes on and tackles, and uh, <laughs> you can hear our uh, those kind of stuff a, a little bit more. But it's I think we're just so focused. It, it's it's not as bad as what you as what you'd imagine it to be, sort of thing. Yeah, I, I don't know if you um, I don't know if you've seen it at all. There there was a guy. It, it was on Twitter, I think, this week. Guy in rugby, the celebration. I think if you if you can catch it, you'd have to sort of talk to the lads about it because, I mean, you can't get booked for this because there's no crowd there. But what he done was he scored a try, and he jumped over and he went and sat in a seat and then clapped him like he was the crowd. <laughs> but there's no That's crowd wild. there. You'd have, to, you'd have to talk to the lads and see yeah. if I can get them over get there and start. Eh? <laughs> hey? We'd definitely get booked for that. Hundred <laughs> percent. That'd be a booking. There's no crowd there, though. You're not inciting no one. What, what you should do is rather than the goal scorer do it, everyone else run and yeah, well, the crowd it. Yeah. and do it. <laughs> I just, I just, I found it. I, it was cracking because he scored this try and he's literally he's run off. And he just got in. He just got in the front seat, and he's just clapping them all. Oh. I've got so much time for that. <laughs> um, and that brings us up to sort of now, mate. So, like, you, you settled in, in mid table. You oh, is it fourteenth um, in the league at yeah, the moment? So, yeah. um, last night weren't weren't the best result for you, mate. But you you're only 10, 10 points off the playoffs. Is it a bit too late now? Do you think, or is that still sort of in, in your eye line no I think it's too late for us I think it's um, I think last night ended it yeah I mean I mean the playoffs the teams in the playoffs are going to win four out of the last six like that's the form of that kind of team in there so we realistically look at it we, we, we won't be uh, we have to get to close that gap sort of thing but we're we sort of had a strange season in a way it's kind of like new manager and trying to play a different way and they've they sold a lot of players this year um, I think with COVID and stuff we've had to balance the books like the wage was been slashed nearly in half um, so it, it's just one of those seasons where everything's like almost clear in the deck season where it's not ideal but you know they've had to move players move on, on sort of thing. yeah and they've had to sort of almost prepare for next summer for, for, for what's going to happen so it's it's, it's been good that we've not been involved. At one point, like, we could be involved in like a bit of a relegation scrap. So it's good that we've sort of come out of that. But it'd be nice to sort of finish with the top half of the table, sort of finish and a little bit of optimism for, for next year. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, mate. And like you said, with, with Russell Martin coming in as well as his first managerial job, it's a good sort of learning curve for him as well at that level. And he can sort of go again next season with hopefully with all the fans back and have a right good go at it. Um, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, mate. Um, just to sort of like that brings us up to now, but just to sort of close our chat off, I've just got a list of sort of questions based on like your your career. Um, before we actually go on to them, how many years is it you have left to get a double testimonial, and has that ever been done? Uh, I believe it has been done. You know, has it? I, I think Alvin Martin had one at West Ham. Oh, oh did he really? Yeah. I'm, I'm semi sure. I think mean, Dave is boy with MK. And I think he did mention it before. Um, no way. But I think, yeah, I kind of think Alvin did. But I'm not 100 percent sure. But I think he might have done. Is it two uh, more years you'd have to do? It would be from 2002, so it'd be. I, I think technically it's from next year because it's. I had my one this time late. Ah, gotcha. Uh, because it was, it was two years later than it should have been, but right. it, it just the way it worked out sort of thing. So I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think it's something I probably want to put myself through again. And all. <laughs> it was... Oh, you've got to. That's, that's like, that, 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 that doesn't happen. The double testimonial, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Get us a game. Yeah. Go, get, on, get on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll come on. I'll be your player coach. I'll come on the pitch for a photo and everything with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then the, the first one that I've got is obviously you, you, you've had a, a long career with MK Dance. During that time, you must have had offers to go elsewhere. Um, yeah. And how, oh. how close have, have any of them come, if if at all, sort of thing? Didn't you nearly get part exchanged? Huddersfield, wasn't it? Uh, Huddersfield, yeah. Yeah, that was the end of Martin Allen. He, um, so that he Pavel Allen, wasn't it? The Pavel, yeah. He, I didn't know. Typical Martin Allen, he, we'd had an argument about a war, I think it was. Something stupid like that. And, uh, <laughs> and um, we... Uh, someone rang me and said, you... You going to Huddersfield, and I said, well, I'm not. And uh, <laughs> they said, no, they, they, they put a bid in or something like this. And um, so I felt like, okay, like you know, if he's gonna doesn't want me, I, I go. And so I, I agreed terms at Huddersfield, went up there and met the manager and, and agreed terms. And then I'm not sure if Pavel turned it down. He did, yeah, yeah, um, he turned it down, yeah. And so it, it, it just didn't it didn't happen. It was um, it was a bit of a strange. Happened really within like a week. Very strange from sort of I played every game and then oh. sort of got a fan calls to say that they they weren't weren't used to go, sort of thing. So um that was pretty close. And then um I agreed with Fulham, agreed terms with Fulham in what was that in 2009, I think it was, and that no. Yeah, 2009, something just after the League Two season. Um they just got into the Europa League. And so they needed a bigger squad for the games that they were going to have and, and whatnot sort of thing. So um, it was going to be like a, a number two. I think Konczewski was in there at the time. Um, and so we'd agreed everything. And when they tried to get to Milton Keynes to buy me, they just um, they just priced me out of the move, really. They just sort of asked for, I think it was like a million quid for a League One defender, which is, uh, is, is just not going to happen sort of thing. So it, yeah. it, it just never... It just never happened, really. And they were sort of the two closest. I mean, you speak to clubs or they speak to you sometimes and, you know, would you fancy this? Would you fancy that bit? You know, until they put a bid in, it's all it's all really irrelevant. It's all just yeah. talking. Yeah. And Would that have been Hodgson at the time? It was, yeah. It was Roy, yeah. We were going to end up signing uh, John and Reese's brother. They signed instead. Um, he was one that went there instead, sort of thing, so... It's always, I've always been fine, but I've always, you know, I've signed contracts um, willingly and you have to accept that it goes both ways and, yeah, you know, it's, it's when you're not playing well, you expect to be paid and when someone wants to make, you want to leave, it's, uh, you know, you sign that contract and, Fair play. you know, with the stuff with Fulham, I never, I never put in a transfer request or, or kicked off, it was just like, well, you know, you win some, you lose some sometimes and uh, you have to respect what you've signed or, or or don't sign it, so it was just uh, just one of those things. Yeah, your old man would have loved that though, surely. <laughs> yeah, it'd have been a bit, a bit strange working for him, wouldn't it? it yeah, I'm, I'm glad it didn't happen in the end because <laughs> it was uh, he phoned me and said, like, this is that things. much for your son, <laughs> uh, yeah, not, uh, yeah, we were nowhere near that. So, uh, he rang me and said about going, and he said that they basically done all their scouting behind his back. And my name come up and they sort of kept it from him. So he wasn't sort of involved in it. And at last minute they said, listen, Dean's at the top of the list for the second choice left back. Are you okay working with him? And he said, yes. And he said to me, are you okay? And I was like, well, yeah, if you are. Um, <laughs> but as it turns out, I think it's probably a good thing that it never happened because <laughs> you, you, no, you can just tell you're only there because your dad you know, you, you know what's coming and you'll get, you yeah. know, it yeah. kind of, it saved me from that and it saved him from me being in the changing room and that awkwardness with other players not trusting you because you're going home and you're with his family. Something. Yeah, yeah so it's, in, in a way, I think it was probably, a, it was probably the best thing yeah. that it didn't happen. Yeah, that could probably be awkward, couldn't it? Yeah. Um, right, so first one after that is uh, best player you've played with. Uh, it, probably yeah, Delhi. I think, I think Delhi closely, closely behind the be with the Keith Andrews. I think 
But I think, uh, yeah, Dell was just, he had that little bit of star, star quality that you don't really see at sort of the lower level sort of things. I think, I think probably Dell, yeah. It's the wrong answer. It's Patrick Bamford, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best player you've played against? Uh, Hazard. Uh, he, he was at Chelsea. Uh, we played in the FA Cup. And uh, I'm pretty sure he was in second gear, but even second gear, it was like playing against the Ghost. You just couldn't get near the fellow. It was, it was incredible. Um, real eye-opener of how good the top players are. Um, he was just one of them players. You just, whatever you did, he just, he had everything to beat you, no matter what you tried. He was, he was, um, he was, you know, in, incredible. And uh, as I said, he was probably playing at half pace in that game as well. So uh, he, he was, uh, he was, yeah, easily the best player. He was immense at Chelsea, wasn't he? He's uh, yeah, he was he good, he? one of the most amazing sort of like from a standing position, could just go to hundred mile an hour. Yeah, like, acceleration. Oh, and then he's gone, and it was like. Yeah, and he's tiny as well. Like in the game, in the tunnel, you're thinking, I can't believe how small he is. Like he's gonna he's, smash he's it. So, yeah, <laughs> on, like, yeah, I'm gonna let him like have one early. Like his <laughs> shoulders are like tiny. He's really small, but like when the ball comes in, he he put his foot on the ball, and if you felt because he was so quick, you had to almost guess which way he was gonna go, and he could just feel you. So if you went early left, he would just turn right and gone, and vice versa, and so you just couldn't. There was no way of getting close to him. He was so, he's, that first five yards, he was so quick, you had to gamble. Yeah. And he knew which way he was going to gamble. And he just, he went the other way in the end. You just left him alone and hoped someone else dealt with him. It was just like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go near the fellow. It was just like, you know, just jockey, you know, just right. jockey. <laughs> yeah, jockey from 20 yards away. Just <laughs> <laughs> Love that. It'd be feigning injury and every, oh, all the ammy yeah. feels a bit tight. <laughs> um, Who's the most underrated player you've ever played with? Um, underrated. Uh, you know what? I, I think Pat probably comes into that category. I think there'd be, oh, I could list a few players for you, but you would have no idea who they <laughs> are. Be, you know. um, now I played with a lot of players who probably deserve a better career than what they had. Um, yeah. But for whatever reason, it just didn't happen from... But in terms of his actual quality, I think Pat's probably out there with being a lot better than than what maybe people have thought for a long time up until... Well, it's only now, time. isn't it? Yeah. Really, he's getting that. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably Pat's good for Decent. Um, the worst trainer? Worst trainer? If I was talking about any of that, actually... Uh, Adam Smith, he's at Bournemouth now. Oh yeah, the right back. Yeah. The right back, yeah. He went him on loan from Tottenham, and I, I just, I love him. He's, he's a great bloke, really funny. Um, <laughs> but the geezer don't move in training. He was. Uh, like when we first signed him, I, I was sort of looking to car, thinking like, who is this kid? Like he's useless. Um, like he just didn't run, he didn't part, like, didn't do anything, and then. Um, he got him in the first game. He just scored. He scored a goal from about forty yards against Rochdale. And we're looking like you, it's unbelievable, incredible strike. And he did it about three times that season. Um, but you could never guess in training. He would try it. It would go over the bar. It would go anywhere. Um, but in the game, he was he was incredible. But training, absolutely. You don't want to win yours in. Yeah, some players can just turn it on in the game, right? Like. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. How players make it as well because managers yeah. make such a big thing out of training. Yeah, but like how do you get the opportunity to sort of? Yeah. And there must yeah. have been, over the years there must be so many players that are like that that shit in training and just never get the chance. And they, yeah. all you know, they could be like world beaters once they get on the pitch. Yeah, I don't know. If it was smudge, but it was like he came from Tottenham and he wasn't really wanting to be with us or. <laughs> Whether he was nervous or whether he was, he needed that adrenaline to play well. Like some players do need that edge. Yeah. They the, don't the, like in training. They're not interested in this. There's that kind of competitiveness to it. Um, but you know, he, he was a great player. He was, you know, he played at a really good level for, for all his career. But when he, when you first saw him in training, you would you would not have said it to be fair. He was a he was definitely not one for training. <laughs> <laughs> um, hardest player you've played with. 
hardest player. I'd probably say Keith. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was that weird hard way. He wouldn't shout. <laughs> just he just had a stare about him, just like Steely. Like someone would go into him, he he would just stare at them, and you you just knew it was coming. Like he just uh, yeah, and he was fair. Like you know, there's people that are like hard, but they they just basically hack. It's not fair. It's just, uh, you know, just yeah, yeah. You're kicking someone. It's not that's not tough. Um, yeah. Like Keith was, he would tackle you properly, um, and he had that edge. Like in training, like he was the one. Like if someone nutmegged him, he'd, he'd have you by the throat, and like, like you just, you know, he went and played. He just didn't mess with you. He had like a, a different side to him. Um, yeah, he was, he was a tough lad. That's mad. He don't show that on his punditry, does he? <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Clean cut. <like. laughs> um, hardest play you played against. Ah, oh, damn. Um, it could be some one of the League Two centre halves or something, one of those big old meatheads. Uh, yeah. Harry Maguire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's playing against him. Uh, I don't think it would be, you know. Um, I'm trying to think, a striker, he always really awkward was that Tom Pope at Port Vale. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate, he. He's decent. You should, jump and, you should jump in your head, like back stick cross. You knew it was coming. He just used to jump and I'd say he was tough, but he wasn't. He's not hard, hard. Uh, maybe Morgan. Remember the old Sheffield United centre half? Yeah, Chris Morgan. Yeah, Chris Morgan. He was like, on here, yeah. He was. He was a tough bloke. He was pretty no nonsense. He was a dirty um, bastard and all. Yeah, he, he could have it. To be fair, he done Ian Hume, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's factually skull, didn't he? Yeah. Um, it, it was just like when them, you don't really see it as much now, but like that kind of breed of centre half that old school, yeah, Animal. old school sort of, <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah, I, I go for him, he was pretty, um, yeah, he was pretty, he was pretty tough. I heard Humey actually tell a story about that. He said, like, the, the next year or something, when he first made like got back on the pitch, he played against him and he said he was like so unapologetic, basically, you deserved it type thing. And he <laughs> said he, he came over to him at the start of the game. And like put his arm around him and that, and basically said in his ear, "I'm only doing this for the cameras." Off you go, sort of thing. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, like proper fucking <laughs> load of belt, mate. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> biggest diva you've played with? Uh, I'm trying to think, there's not been many. They don't really get many in League One, League Two. There's not a. It's not really happening. Um, I can't really think of anyone that we've had that's been too bad. Mm. I think mm. of the, the lone boys that we have. We have yeah, none of the big boys. You know what? I, I can't really think of anyone that's been... That's good, mate. That's been outrageously... Uh, actually, you know what? Michael McIndoe. Mark really? Kingdom, the old left winger. Yeah, like Kingdom, yeah, yeah. Um, he was, he was, uh, <clears throat> he, yeah. he got to me before the start of the game once and said, listen, when you get the ball, just pass it to me. <laughs> went, because when I get it, beat two players and cross it, someone scores. <laughs> where, he said like, where did, where did the move start? And I'd be like, what do you mean? He was like, where did it start? And I was, he was like, you started that move by giving the ball to me. He was like, I'll get you a move if you keep passing me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you? <laughs> uh, yeah, it never happened. He never beat anyone. But um, <laughs> and every time he got subbed, apparently he used to come down and like 80 minutes ago and sit on the bench. And he'd be like, I don't understand why he's taking me off. I was just getting warmed up. It was just like, <laughs> Marco, it's, the 80th, it's the 80th minute, mate. He's not beating him once. But he was, he was, yeah, he was, he was a little bit, and he had, he wanted to be treated a certain way, like expected, like food and uh, sort of a higher standard than probably what we were given him, sort of things. Like, yeah, Michael Mac and Mac and Dad. That is brilliant. <laughs> I love that. Um, funny man. Uh, Kev Gallum. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. He's uh, he's good fun. Kev, to be fair, he's good fun. He's like in a round place, like. Slightly probably old school now in terms of what you can do. Um, but he was sort of 
he was very funny and night out as well. He's 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 good value to be fair. That's class. Fucking hell, he scored some goals, didn't he, in his day? Yeah, Mate, he was a proper player. It was yeah. just that injury killed him, but yeah, he was a good player. 100 um, percent In regards to the managers you've had, who was the best when they took part in training? Uh in C Yeah. In C was yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was, oh, he, yeah, he used to smash you in training. He would he'd have a go at you. Um I mean I always grew up thinking that Paul Wince was like a break play up tackler. Um Hi. but he was he was good, he was really good and he'd have most days you used to wage someone to like a volley challenge. So you'd have five volleys with your left, five of your right from like 20 yards out. And he'd, well, he'd, do, he'd, he'd win most weeks, to be fair. Like he, wow. he, was, he was a good player and a lot better than I, than I ever thought he was when he was playing. I had him down as a bit of a you know, win the ball and give it to someone better sort of thing. But he was, <laughs> uh, he was, he was very good, yeah. That's class. It's, it's becoming a bit of a trend here, Greg, with... Uh... Managers and their volleys. Ben Turner yeah. was saying the same with Nigel Clough. He said Nigel he, was, Clough. he was like they a professional volleyer. He said they all, seem, <laughs> they all seem to be ex Liverpool, mate. Yeah. <laughs> bit of a trend here. <laughs> he, he was just like for hours in training, he'd get like a youth team goalie and just set up volleys. And he'd just be doing volleys for hours. Right, yeah. <laughs> one see, yeah. time, him and his assistant done their car off. in because they were doing so many volleys. <laughs> Top off just sunning themselves, volleying the ball in the net, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking quality. Um, in regards to initiation songs, who's the best singer you've seen or heard? Uh, I think we've, had some, we've had some pretty confident lads down the years. It's become so... It's become so popular this now that everyone's sort of prepared. In the old days, it was... Yeah. It was a bit, you know, it was a bit more... Daunting. I think everyone has to do it now, so it's not less so. Um, They're practicing it now, aren't they? Yeah. Andros has got a hell of a voice, hasn't he? Andros is, yeah, he was okay. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of boys that can sing, I think. I think, do you know, we called, we called him Jet, J. Emmanuel Thomas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He's playing he, up in Scotland now, isn't he? Yeah, I think it's, it's Motherwell or something like that, isn't he? Yeah. Um, I, I thought he, you were going to say him for the diva, to be honest. No, he was good, no, he was good to be fair. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was a good lad. Um, He's he saying, I think he rapped the song for about, I think we had to stop, tell him to stop doing it. He was just, <laughs> he wanted to carry on and everyone was just like, no, no you, you're done. Sort of thing. But he was, he was good and he was, he was confident. Like he actually enjoyed doing it, I think. So I'd probably say Jet. Decent. Fair play to him. <laughs> I love um, that, by the way, Jet. <laughs> yeah, it's quality, isn't it? <laughs> um, this one is sort of a, a, a double-ended question. So you can answer it however, however you want, or both ways if you want. Um, biggest dick you've ever played with? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> trying to think of uh, God, there's been a few, few serious weapons, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I'll say probably Joby. Joby McEnough? Yeah. Yeah, he's the loveliest bloke in the world, so. Um, but <laughs> yep, the other yeah. reason then. <laughs> yeah, what a Joby lad. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> Where's the little ones and all, Greg? Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> always the little ones. Better say it than this. Unbelievable. <laughs> um, next one is best Christmas party in your career and why? Ooh. Uh... Probably in this year, we managed to wangle uh, Barcelona. Um, so we had two days, two days in Barcelona. Um, it, it was just obviously being abroad um, and just obviously being in a different country. Like the first day, so we did a whole day down the beach bar and then the club. And then I think the next day, we went to the Hard Rock Caf and some of the lads wanted to do a, a tour of the new camp. Yeah. Um, so they went, and when they come back, they got the old eggy boff for about six hours because it just wasn't acceptable to go. Oh. <laughs> on, your Christmas, on your Christmas day, you can't go to a, a tour of another ground. So uh, <laughs> they got absolutely just side for like half a day. Um, but Barca was 
obviously like, a very good city and the nightlife was amazing. And what was the stadium like then? <laughs> no idea. No idea. <laughs> I had zero interest in going to a bloody football <laughs> stadium. Uh, <laughs> but was, yeah, I think just we've done, we've done Ireland a few times, but everyone goes, a lot of teams go Ireland and Newcastle and like, all the big cities. But I think to actually get away and be in a foreign country, I think, is yeah, Barcelona. Class. Um, and then last one, mate. Who, who, are your, who are your closest mates in the game? And can you get any of them for us on here? Closest mates? Uh, I'd probably say. Uh, Dave Mines. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Got too, they got too far now. They're, they're too big time. Now, <laughs> um, probably Dave Martin. Oh, really? Yeah, so I speak to Dave quite a lot. Um, we was we was together in the youth team at Wimbledon, so he was he was a year below me. So um, where's he at now? Is he still at West Ham? He's still, West yeah, Ham. he's at West Ham. Yeah, mm. he's at West Ham. So from sort of fourteen, Dave. Um, all the way through sort of things so we've sort of wow. kept in contact the whole time um, and then still speak to Smithy um, so I speak to him quite a bit and stuff so there's, there's a few it's I mean, as the years go by you sort of uh, you sort of lose contact and 100% yeah it's, just, it's hard don't it? it's like with everyone you move around the country and, and whatnot sort of thing so but yeah I'd probably say probably Dave and Smithy and there's a boy at MK called Dean Bowditch oh yeah so, yeah Bowditch yeah, yeah. and stuff um Still close. He still works at the club, but I'm still, still pretty close to him. He's a quality player, Dean Bowditch was. Yeah, he's a good player, yeah. He was, yeah. But, um, yeah, Dean, absolutely well, mate. brilliant, mate. Really, really appreciate you coming on. That was class. No Probably enjoyed yeah, it, mate. So, um, no yeah, ev everyone who, who's watching on YouTube, um, slap a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And um, for the audio listeners, uh, make sure you rate and review on any of your podcast platforms. So, yeah, until next time, guys, all the best. Cheers, Dean.